The word of the Lord this morning comes to us out of 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 3 and verse 4. Verse 3 and verse 4. 2 Chronicles chapter 3, uh, chapter 20, verse 3 and verse 20. Verse 3 says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I'd like to continue on my series on its fourth installment today on Teach Us. You may have your seat. Teach Us. We have been dealing with for the last several Sundays from the whole theme of Teach Us and not just uh, how to pray but why pray. Uh, the, the ingredients of prayer and we've been talking about prayer for the last several uh, last several last three weeks and I find it to be befitting since we are in a time of prayer and fasting or consecration and today becomes the the conclusion of our consecration um, but what I ask you with all the passion that's within me that you keep your devotion to God keep your devotion with God keep that closeness that you have uh, with God. On last week, I talked about why pray. And we talked about that God's word calls us to prayer simply because God said so. He commanded us to pray. He commanded us to stay in dialogue with him and it should be the intent of every believer to remain in an, in an obedient posture with the Lord and then we said that we pray why pray we pray because prayer is how we communicate with God it's how we communicate with God. Prayer becomes uh, an opportunity and a way of worship. It becomes a way of confessing our sins. It becomes a, a way of breathing in the breath of God. Prayer becomes that avenue, that vehicle. And prayer then also allows us to grants us rather the opportunity to present our requests to God and in presenting our request to God we are in communication with our creator 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves come to a posture and pray communicate to me somebody say communicate seek my face come after me prayer seeking my face will cause you to turn from some ways that are not like I want it to be and then you will hear from heaven I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will do some things I will begin to answer your prayer requests if you come after me and seek me and then I don't think I got to this one last week so prayer allows us to participate in God's work. Prayer allows us to participate in God's work. What did I say? That's important. That's, that's, that's important. Uh, uh, God doesn't need our help. We need his help. He's all powerful and God is in control of everything in his own creation. Who makes something if they cannot create it, if they cannot control it? So God is, 
in control of his own creation. So why do we need to pray? Because prayer is the means that God has ordained for things to happen. God has ordained that, that mode of interaction so that things can happen. Somebody say, so that things can happen. You see, prayer, for instance, helps others to know the love of Jesus Christ. Prayer can clear, can clear human obstacles out of the way in order for God's work to be done. It is not that God cannot work without our prayers, but that he has established prayer as a part of his plan of accomplishing his will in earth. Come on and say, God knows what he's doing. So prayer allows us to participate in what God is doing. And then fourthly, 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 prayer keeps us humble before God. Prayer keeps us humble before God. Thessalonians says, uh, uh, chapter 5 says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, rejoice always and pray without ceasing. I, you, you know, I, I can't afford not to pray because prayer keeps me in a posture of deliverance. I'm afraid of who I will become if I don't pray. You talking about taming the wild man in you? How can you not pray? You know your proclivities. You know your challenges. And the only thing that's keeping that stuff dead is talking to God. You know I'm telling the truth. Prayer is keeping you from tipping over. Prayer is keeping your mind sane. Prayer is keeping your family together. You don't like what I'm saying. Prayer is keeping your financial picture together. You one prayer away from collapsing. How can you not pray? The Bible says pray and not faint. Teach a lesson, bald-headed man, which suggests to me if I don't pray, my next move is to faint. And could it be that many that have fainted is because you didn't pray? Prayer keeps us humble before God. Humility is a virtue of God that, that God desires in us. God wants us to come to a place of dependence on him. And prayer reminds us that we have a covering. Prayer reminds us that we are really not in control. Prayer has a way of putting us back in place. Prayer has a way of reconditioning our conditions. Matthew 18 and 4 says, Therefore, Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom. Prayer brings me in a posture of submission. And it keeps my desires and flesh dead. Y'all all right? Number five, number five. Why pray? Because answer pray, answered prayer is a potential witness to others. Why pray? Because answered prayers. Oh, answered prayer is a potential witness to others. If our prayer is answered, it can serve as a potential witness for those who doubt. When you can say to the person next to you on your job or in your family, I have the same condition. 
And I prayed to God. And God heard my prayer. You've been now become a witness that prayer does work. <laughs> Why pray, number six? I'm getting on through my little sermonette. Number six, number six. Prayer grants us the privilege of experiencing God. Prayer grants us the privilege of experiencing, experiencing rather, God. Through prayer, through prayer, through prayer, we obtain an experiential basis for our faith. You see, prayer gives us a way to live out our faith. Because how can I believe in someone that I can't talk to? Ooh, I, uh, and so it gives me a way, a, 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 a experiential way of living out our faith. We do not ignore the intellect or the reasons for faith. But prayer makes our experience of God real on an emotional basis. Stop trying to relate to God without your emotions. That's like trying to love your mate or your mama or your daddy without your emotions. That is a part of what God has given you to worship him with. Teach a lesson, Bishop Porter. He said, love him with your body, soul. How you going to love somebody that you ain't emotionally attached to? So we're trying to struggle in our walk with God because we're trying to divorce our emotions. No, if you go, you've got to have all of you involved in loving him. Prayer makes that experience of God on a real emotional basis. And can I tell you, my dears and sirs, that that is what theologically makes Jehovah God different from Baal and any other God that's made in the minds of men because they cannot feel what they believe in. Teach a lesson, Bishop Porter. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they can't feel Baal because he's an engraven image. They can't feel the sun god because Jehovah God made it. Jehovah God is the only God that can be experienced emotionally because every other God has been made in the minds of men or the hands of men. Something is wrong when the creation uh, produces the creator. I'm almost done my little sermonette. Why pray? Because prayer is always available when nothing else is. You can talk to God when you can't talk to mama and them. There's some places you can't go. But prayer has no distance. Prayer is always available to us. Nothing can keep us from approaching God in prayer except our own choice to do it. Because when we pray, we invite God into our experience. The text is so real here because it speaks of a place that every one of us comes to in life. Mm-hmm. 
it speaks to sometime when things happen, it brings along companions. Have you ever been in a situation that one thing happened and then while one thing was happening, something else happened? And then while that happened, something else happened? It's like this cord has been organized against you. But this morning, our text tells us not only why to pray, but the results of prayer. It teaches us that even people who are strong in God have moments in their life where fear comes to grip them. None of us in this room, I don't care how much ghost of God you got. You are not immune from fear knocking at your door. Teach a lesson, Bishop Porter. Fear appeals to our human aspect of our life. Faith speaks to our spirit man that must now control our human man. But fear appeals to our human instinct. Fear becomes situational. And even in this text this morning, Jehoshaphat was a great king of Judah. And the text was such a blessing to me because Jehoshaphat's life didn't start in chapter 20. Sometimes people look at your challenge or look at where you are and think you, where you are, you started there. But his attack didn't start in chapter 20. It started way in chapter 18. And the reason why Ella Wooten is started because he chose to do the right thing. He chose to bring Israel back to God and to restore the Levitical order back into the temple of God that had been taken away. He decided to tear down the graven images and all that stuff that was built up in there by the gods of Baal. He chose to come against what the other prophets had said that God was going to do and God never said that. He chose to change the whole structure of the worship experience to invite God back in the house. He chose to go back and rebuild the altars that have been torn down because of no usage. And when anybody have a purpose in their mind to do the right thing, you upset the kingdom of hell. When you decide that I'm going to do what God has so designed for my life, that I'm going to become who God willed me to be, you upset the kingdom of hell. Because you cannot obey God and not tear down the works of the enemy. What I discovered, Brother Travis, that sometimes enemies become friends. I'm going to say that again. Enemies can make some strange bed partners. Enemies can make some strange bed partners. Let me say it again. Enemies can make some strange bed partners. They don't have to like each other to be together because they have a common call. teaching good and great at Salem. I thought I was going to hoop, but I ain't going to hoop. I'm going to talk this message out. You know why? Because, you see, when enemies become friends, it's not about likability. It's about common call. And sometimes you become the common call.
you ask the question, how they get together? <laughs> you know y'all say that. Sometimes when you discover the forces that are against you and you look at all the ingredients of the force, you say, how did how, how that happen? They didn't like each other. Last week, they all told me about each other. And now they didn't become a committee of one. It's not about likability. It is about common cause. That's why politics makes them strange bed partners. Okay, let me get it. I got five minutes. Lord, help me. Look, look at what happens. Thank you, Mother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mother's divorced for the church. She said, take my time. So she spoke for all of them. That's a unanimous decision. <laughs> Unite against you. The text shows that Mount Seir, Moab, the enemies of Mount Seir, Moab, and Ammonon were enemies who hated each other. They were nations and people who couldn't stand each other. They fought each other over property, they tried to slaughter each other. But somehow something happened in their cause. Their cause no longer was each other. Because they recognized that each one of them didn't have enough to make it by themselves. And only one person had sufficiency. And that was Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat represented the strength that all of them wanted. Can I preach to somebody and tell them, sometimes people look at you and you represent what they want to become. Whether it's your level of influence, teach a lesson, Bishop Porter. It's what you have come to. It's what you have suffered through. It's the oil on your life. And they think because they got the same hairdo, was born in the same year, because y'all shop in the same store, because y'all like the same food, I can be just like you. That's not the qualifier. Lord, I got three minutes. Lord, okay. Jehoshaphat did what the other three nations were not willing to do. He went in and said, we are not doing it like this. This has brought our nation down to a godless position. Oh my God. We have walked out of holiness. We are singing songs with no virtue and power. We've hit the scroll of the Lord. We have dismissed the altar of God and our people are living wicked ways. You have made everything right and caused the people to come to a place that everything is right and because he chose to go up against what was the norm, God honored him. And the text says in chapter 19, every place he went after, God gave it. Woo! I'm, I'm, I got touched right there. Woo, 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 woo. There's a place in God I want to get to. And that place, Brother Travis, that, that I want to get to is not that God does what he does in spite of me. But God does what he does because of me. Not that God uses you because you're just in the place. But God uses you because you are in the right place. I don't want you to use me because I'm up front. I want you to use me because I've been up front. But being up front has brought pleasure to you. 
some of us he's using us in spite of us you just happen to be there but your life don't match what you're doing but you just up front and the people are much greater than who you are so he uses you in spite of you that's not where I want to be I want to be God you use me because of me Lord I got I got a minute Jehoshaphat made some decisions and his decisions, my dears and sirs, caused enemies to become united together. And they turned on Jehoshaphat and they came after him furiously. They came after him with vigor. They came to do him in and fear gripped his heart because he said, God, they didn't handle their stuff in another era, which has now opened the door to the enemy in this era and feel gripped him because is this how I'm going out? <laughs> but the text says he sought the Lord. Come on, says seek the Lord. The result of prayer is that prayer will produce fellowship. I shared this with you last week, but I got to hit it again. It will produce fellowship. Come on, say fellowship. fellowship. Prayer will now have us to become a part of what God is doing because he sought the Lord and he prayed in those verses from verse 3 on down to about verse 11, 12. He prayed. He prayed earnestly, his heart before God. My God, fear drove him to his knees, but fear didn't cause him to shed his mouth. I may drop down in fear, but I ain't going to be in fear long once I get there. Oh, my God. You can't stay down there long without praying away fear. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty there. Woo Tell you, but just, just let me drop to my knees. Oh, I, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to get messed up in there. See, he wants to prevent you from dropping to your knees. If you got to drop to your knees with tears in your eyes, baby, drop to your knees. If you got to drop to your knees with doubt in your spirit, drop to your knees. Because when I get on my... Woo, It produced fellowship. Come on, somebody say fellowship. It caused him to become a worker with what God was doing. <laughs> Some of us don't know what God is doing because you won't talk to him. You talk to everybody else. No, cut through the chase and talk to the one who can give you the real answers. Come into fellowship with him. The Bible says that he, he, he prayed and he sought the Lord. Come on, say, seek, seek the Lord. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do. Has anybody ever been there before? Ain't nothing wrong with not knowing what to do, but put a comma right there. In the text, there's a comma, but <laughs> thank God for conjunctions. Hallelujah. Come on, say, but. <laughs> Lord, we don't know what to do, comma, but. Woo, you may stay there just a little while, but a but is coming. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. You may be there for a little while, but but is coming. Come on. Come on, Ella Wooten. I got it. Come on, get you. We got to go. Woo. I thank God for some conjunctions. <laughs> conjunctions saved my life. He says, we don't know. Come on, Wooten, you ain't walking toward me. Come on. We got to go because y'all going to say I kept you here late. <laughs> he says, he said, 
He says, we don't know what to do. That's, that's what they take. We don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to handle my children, how I'm going to handle my family, how I'm going to handle the situation. I don't know what to do. But what I do know to do, he says, my eyes are on you. Sometimes you got to do what I call look away. Sometimes if you keep looking at the thing, it'll draw you closer to the thing. But sometimes you got to shift from the thing and look to a greater source. I'm looking to the hills from which cometh all of my help. My help comes from. Tell your neighbor, you got to do a look away. Because I'm afraid that if I keep looking at it, I'm going to become it. So I got to do a look away. Tell your neighbor one look. Mm. Come on, Wooten, you ain't over here yet. Come on. leave you on the cliffhanger so I gotta get because you may drop on the cliffhanger so <laughs> but look at what it, it, fellowship with God produce dependency on God the Bible says that he looked and the Bible says and the spirit fell on Jehazi who was in the temple at the hour of prayer and God gave him the answer that Jehoshaphat needed. The long told him this battle is not yours for this battle is the Lord's You'll have no need to fight in this battle. Dependency will produce your answer. Mm, so prayer when things are not well because men ought to always pray and not faint his answer came out of prayer the old folk would say prayer is the key faith unlocks the door prayer until things change pray until you change the mother smith in the church i grew up in she she would say pray until you pray through tell your neighbor pray till you pray through pray till your answer come pray till the bounds are drop off of you pray to bondage is loose yeah pray to your money get better pray to your children get delivered James said when you pray believe you have received is there anybody in here I am convinced that there's answers to prayer well the Bible said in the text of this same chapter that the Bible said to him I need you to trust me but I need you to work with me I need you to obey me 
And God said to Jehaziel to tell that man of God to get up in the morning just like he would normally do and go on the other side because the enemy is not expecting him to come on that side. They are waiting on one side. Prayer will give you divine instructions. Prayer will give you the way in and the way out. So while the enemy was waiting on one way, God led him another way. Can I tell somebody in here, your strategic plan is going to be found in prayer. Your way out is going to be found in prayer. God's going to release some things. If you spend time in prayer, you got a ministry you want, get on your knees and pray. You got a business in trouble, get on your knees and pray. You got a mind in trouble, get on your knees and pray. For the Bible said, he that is afflicted, let him pray. If you're in trouble, then you pray. Yeah, yeah. Pray until you see change. Tell your neighbor, there is power in prayer. Shake your neighbor's hand. Tell him there's power in prayer. Prayer will rock the jail. Prayer will change the courtroom. Prayer will change the test results. Prayer will take you to the top. Prayer will give you what you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody said pray when things are going well. Pray when things are going bad. I'm like the song. Just a little talk with Jesus we'll make it all right I've got to close the consecration is officially over but I want to tell you make prayer the order of the day don't start your day without talking to him don't end your day without talking to him throughout the day talk to him Talk to him. Tell him where you are. Talk to him. He'll make a way out of no way. I'm going, Wooten. I want to say it. Have you any rivers that you cannot tunnel through? Have you any mountains that you cannot seem to solve? God. God specializes. He's got the power to do it. He's able. He's able. He's got the power to do what needs to be done. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pray, 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 pray. Tell your neighbor, pray it through. Shake the neighbor's hand. Tell him, pray it through. Trouble in your home. Pray it through. Trouble on the job. Pray it through. Trouble in your body. Pray it through. Trouble in your marriage. Pray it through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pray it through. Pray it through. Pray it through. How you gonna get through? Pray it through. Down on my knees. When trouble rise, I talk to Jesus beyond the sky. He promised me he'll hear my plea. If I tell him, if I tell him on my knees, just a little talk with Jesus, he'll make it.